hello welcome to this lesson of um, how to solve systems of ODEs with complex roots okay all right so if you have not subscribed to my channel kindly subscribe to support the channel as well okay all right let's start um we are supposed to solve this system of ODEs okay with the first equation being this okay and this one being the second equation it's as if you are solving normal simultaneous equations but then here is just um, ODEs that we are solving, okay? Solving the ODEs simultaneously, okay? So, in order to solve this, what you need is you need the arging values and arging vectors of the coefficient matrix in this equation. The coefficient matrix is given by this one, okay? It's simply by writing the coefficient of variables involved in all the equations. So, in the first row, in the first row you write the coefficients of um, the variables in the first row so the variable for x here is 0x okay so we don't have any zero here that is why sorry we don't have any x here that's why we have just y like that so you just write the coefficient of x in this first equation that is zero in the first row okay and you go to the second row here okay second row here um like i didn't finish it with the first row okay we write a first coefficient for x here that is zero and you write the coefficient of y which is negative one that is this okay then go to the second row this is also plus zero y so write the coefficient of x here which is one in the first entry of the first row then you write zero for y as a coefficient of y in the second entry in the first second row okay like that you write the coefficient of the variable that is what you do here okay all right so let's go ahead and solve this and also after everything um you know when you as, as you are doing we'll be solving um equations with distinct adding values which are real okay for that one i'll write the formula for you okay but then for this one after everything what you you need to do is your x of t that is the solution is given by some constant c you just write it like, like this times your vector your adding vector and times e lambda t this is the solution okay for a complex root and you have two complex root now i'll show you why you're supposed to get some two terms the complex root to generate the two terms automatically for you okay so let's let's move ahead okay now with this you said that a is this okay so to find the argent values you said you so you do this you find a minus lambda i okay lambda i sorry this this i is not a complex number i just like this but the i will be the identity matrix of the matrix you are working with here we are working with a two by two matrix so we have i2 like that okay and this is giving us when you subtract lambda i from a you get minus lambda minus one one negative lambda i hope you know how you got this you know your i is given i2 is giving us one zero zero one so you multiply lambda to it okay and this will give you lambda here lambda here so you subtract them term y so zero minus lambda again negative lambda like that that is why you got this okay i hope you understand the process so after getting this then you solve for the characteristic polynomial governing this but i just wanted to write this here okay i don't want to go through the process the characteristic polynomial governing this matrix a p of lambda is giving us is a polynomial in terms of lambda is giving us lambda cube minus trace of a trace a lambda okay so trace of a lambda I'll, I'll define the terms for you plus determinant of a okay now with the trace of a the trace of a is just a summation of the values in the diagonals okay so we sum them so it means trace of a here is equal to zero because zero plus zero plus is zero right and the determinant of a is just the determinant of a you can use a metric or your calculator to find but for a two by two matrix he said you multiply the diagonal elements which will be zero minus the other diagonal elements which will be one times negative one so you get negative one like that so you get one it means that my characteristic polynomial governing this p of lambda is equal to from sorry here i said lambda we're supposed to be lambda squared okay sorry very i'm very sorry it's supposed to be lambda squared so you have this as lambda squared okay minus the trace is zero lambda p 
plus determinant of a which is one so this will give me lambda squared plus one okay so we have a polynomial function or my characteristic polynomial for this whole equation is this okay now I'll go ahead and solve for the zeros of this function this p of lambda meaning equality to zero okay so just find p of lambda equals zero that means lambda squared plus one should be equal to zero so lambda squared is equal to negative one lambda is equal to square root of that is plus or minus square root of negative one that is i so i have plus or minus i so for a complex shoot what you just do is just choose one of the lambdas okay so you just take lambda equals i like that then you go ahead and find this to find our adding vectors you know how to go about it. you find the a minus lambda i times some as your adding vector should give me zero okay if i let okay so let me use a different pen here if i let my adding vector v to be equal to let's say k1 k2 it's a column vector rather okay then my a minus lambda was actually negative lambda okay this is what we got negative one then one negative lambda this is what you got times k1 k2 should give me zero okay now with this what is my lambda you have picked lambda to be an i so i have negative i negative one one negative i like that and times my k1 k2 should give me the zero vector the zero vector i can represent it by zero that is why i'm not saying anything i'm not changing it to a vector form okay i hope this is cool so we are now coming to reduce this matrix here using gaussian elimination method to solve for our lambda okay or our our vector okay so from the vector here if i interchange let's go and check if i swap row one and row two okay what will happen so i'm just picking it only the the um the matrix part only this part okay like i said so that reduce it now if i say row one one equals row two or you can say row two let's swap them like this equals row one then this implies you will get something like well, let me use small brackets one negative i negative i negative one okay this is what you got you get okay so with this what do i do so that i get a very simple um solution you can first of all if you don't know don't have any idea on gas elimination what you can do is first of all you can divide the first entry here you want to make sure that the the um entry below this one is zero i mean this side is zero you want to change it to zero so in order to do that you have to find some multiplier okay so the multiplier m should be equal to one over this one divided by this okay over negative i and that is equal to i okay if you know how to do the with complex numbers this is equal to i okay it's simply um the conjugate of this which is i okay times one over over itself like like this okay okay and when you multiply this you get i here over i times negative i so i times i will give me negative one times negative one i'll get one sorry i'll get one rather okay so this gives me i okay that is why i just wrote i like that i want you to see whatever that is happening that is why i've taken my time to you know explain so if that is the case then you multiply the you 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 find the multiply times the first to the row that you want the the below or the row that you want to eliminate its elements below it okay i mean you multiply this i to um your first row okay so i row one okay i let me put it this way i row one plus row two okay should give me zero okay or you can you can even say i row two itself okay anyhow you want to call it okay let me 
let me put it this way sorry um i want to i want to show you something so that you can you can use it forever okay so after that what you do is you negate your multiplier okay when you negate it let me put it negative m i negate everything i'll negate this i'll get negative i so what you do you just maintain your row one okay row one then whatever value you have here we negate it okay so or you can even maintain it like that and then when you when you're coming to do you just negate it okay so i said that you negate your multiplier and multiply it to the second row the row that i want to change it okay so like that and this will give me one okay you just know that from our basic ideas in um, Gaussian elimination this will give me one the negative i for these ones they will be maintained okay now negative i times negative i because row two we have negative i here already okay so negative times negative i will get what is this one minus for the for the next row let me it's one minus then i have i times root two okay so root two is what negative i so i have i times negative i like that okay that is for the first entry and now i times negative five said is positive one okay so we get one so one minus one is zero so i get zero here and now i have the other one two to be let me do it so that you know for complex roots we we'll have to do it like that so that you know what is happening so here will be zero okay here will be zero now with the second row we said that here the entry here what will happen is you just in everything you said that this is your new row too i forgot to mention okay so what you do here is just um negative i minus we said it's i root 2 so whatever that was there was negative 1 okay times negative 1 and this will give me negative i okay there's a minus here already so negative i minus minus negative i which is negative i plus i which is equal to zero so i have zero here okay so for my coefficient matrix that we are reducing the matrix that we took to reduce it has been reduced to this form okay it has been this matrix has been reduced to this form now we said that a minus lambda i times our v should be equal to zero okay this means that this a minus lambda i was this and now it has been reduced to this so let's use the last term so one minus i zero zero and our v is what k1 k2 should be equal to zero so the first row i'll get k1 minus i k2 is equal to zero it means that my k1 is equal to i k2 so uh, this is what i have for my equation it means for any value i pick for k2 i'll get a different uh, a value for k1 for every value i pick like that so it means this equation has infinitely many solutions and the reason is due to this one okay see one row has diminished or has gone because of this because of this um reason that one one row is being vanished or one row has moved away it means that our solution will have infinite infinitely many solutions so you have to choose values for k1 and k2 and in choosing values for k1 and k2 since we are dealing with the identity matrix or sorry the two by two matrix you choose your k1 and k2 from the columns of your identity matrix or the two by two matrix okay and that is this so for k2 you can either choose for zero or one and for k1 you can either choose from zero one or zero any of them will work but you don't want a value that when you choose you get a trivial solution in the sense that your solution will be just zero the answer will be zero you don't want a, a, a case like that okay so what you want to do is go to the um like i said the columns of uh identity matrix okay then choose k2 to be equal to you say k2 can be choose from these ones okay it corresponds to the second column can be choose to be one if you choose if you choose them zero you get trivial solution but if you choose one you get k1 k1 to also be equal to i times one which is i okay so this means that my argent vector v is equal to 
i1 where my origin value okay lambda was equal to i okay so this is it now the solution like i said for a complex root is giving us x of t i mentioned in the first statement i made i said this is equal to c some constant c times rv times e to lambda t okay so here i would first remove the constant first and work with the argent vector and argent value okay so your argent vector is i1 the argent value is i t okay i hope you get this now in complex numbers e to the power i t is the same as cos cos t cos of t plus i sine t okay you put it in a bracket like that okay now this whole thing st seems to be just a constant okay so you can multiply it through all the values in uh, adding vector and we get something like i times cos t plus i sine t then you have one times cos t plus i sine t okay what you do is just multiply like i said multiply everything through your adding vector and now this will give us something like this let me write it at the top here the multiplication you know that our solution x at t then y at t okay is equal to um in the first one we get i cos t cos t okay i cos t let me put it i cos t and minus because i times this i you give me negative one so minus sine t okay then you come to the other one you have cos t plus i sine t you go just multiply that one by one so this is what you have now i move ahead and uh solution would then be x at t y at t okay should be equal to now if you can rearrange the entries you get i cos t here minus sine t it's okay all right so and um this side will be i sine t plus cos t so if you see where we are going if you see that um there the there is a combination of complex or the imaginary parts and the real part okay so this will be the same as i sine or you can you can call it any how you want to want to call it okay i sine t like this if i add these two vectors i'll get back my solution okay so what you do is just separate the imaginary ones from the real ones this is equal to you can factor i out here then cos t sine t okay plus minus sine t cos t okay so what you can do is the final solution is then written as this x at t y as t this, this is a solution the final solution okay it's not equal to some constant a okay anyhow you want to call your constant is okay then cos t sine t so you just like um ignore the i okay in the first part then plus some constant b times minus sine t cos t so this is a solution this is a step to step way of solving this you can be faster than this okay i took a long process you know explaining why we are doing some stuff so kindly bear with me and then and try to understand the process before you go and write your exams okay all right so that is it and that is the solution for the question we we're solving thank you and don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you